Oh, oh, oh! I love these Capri pants! Take me to the first moment that you actually got to see the fruits of your labors on screen. Uh, we had just finished up a, a session, right? Mm -hmm. A voice session. And they were like, hey, we're gonna show you guys the movie. And they took us to a theater on like the Sony lot. Nice. And yeah, it was just me and Jake. We had food and we- It was a really lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> we were, you know, we got to record together a bunch. We've done a lot of press here, so we, we got to, we've been able to hang a lot. And then being able to watch that movie and see it, which was really nice when it ended, we both kind of looked at each other and neither of us said anything for a while yeah. because visually it's so stunning that it's like nothing you've ever, you know, they told us it's like nothing you've ever seen before. But a lot of people say stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. This really was, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. You know, honestly, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who were the origins of this story, and then the directors, Bobby, Peter, and Rodney, and all the animators did such an intense job with the animation and the story, and there was so much care to it that, you know, I've never, I've done animation before, but this one was just different. We've been recording for two and a half years and we would record in the booth together and then they would animate around performance and then we could do things and they would change things and then, you know, we could also change around the animation. So this was something that they really worked really hard on yeah. and I'm very happy to see people loving it and celebrating it because every time we would go in to record, mm -hmm. the directors wouldn't be like, you know, upbeat and energetic. They all had bags under their eyes. Everyone oh. was tired. They were working. They were tired. Sure. And so this has been, you know, it's been an exciting one to watch the response. Yeah, I mean, you guys could just, if you wanted to, take this opportunity to just list all the other superhero movies that can suck it. Because you guys are on there. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm it seriously. I'm just serious now. <laughs> good spin. Good spin. Should we keep going? On a, on a serious note, I think... Uh, it was crazy because at first, even Chris and Phil, um, and so many people, like at the beginning of the, uh, when we were taking interviews and stuff at first, people were like, well, why do we need another Spider-Man? And what's the point of, you know, what, why exactly, what do you think that they're gonna do, you know, to make this one special? And, and, okay, okay, let me also say something else. It's not one or two or three. I'm talking about, I've seen at least six or seven. <laughs> six or seven, like, hardcore critics say, this is the best Spider-Man movie Spider -Man. ever to this point. You know what I'm saying? And it's animated, you know? So all these seven, eight other movies that y'all was referring to before y'all saw this movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was a great segue. I didn't need to say it. You can, you can fast forward and rewind and it's all been said. That's right. Because like, what would it have meant to you to see Miles Morales on screen like as a 10-year-old? I mean, the same way it felt when I saw him when I was 14 on screen. It was like, whoa, he's black, you know? And I'm the type of person that I don't, I grew up a certain way, which I don't really see color in a way where it's like, you know, this this character is white, so I don't like 007, or I don't like Harry Potter, or I don't like Dragon Ball Z, or Peter Parker, or I don't, I, I didn't even think that I didn't relate to them either, you know? Not until somebody else told me I didn't relate, mm -hmm. you know? And um, that's because I look at, I, like acting and movies and stuff as art. You know, I never looked at these movies and said, I would never be on TV because I don't see any black people on TV. I never thought that way, you know? But when I saw Miles Morales for the first time, I was like, oh, he's black. You know what I'm saying? It, that, that is the point of representation. And, you know, I, I get what I'm, the position that I'm in, it's like, it's very special. And I'm not the only one, we, you know, we're in a new time, but it's, it's uh, I forgot how I even got it. But it here. is really special. Yeah. It is. That's it's really thing. cool. It's, it's also special. really cool to have, you know, Spider Gwen in the movie. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. know, as a father of two daughters, when I first told them I was in Spider Man, they were a lot younger, that they would go around the house and call themselves Spider Man Girl. And I was like, well, I don't mean to be a dick, but there's <laughs> just not a character named Spider Man Girl. Right. It's but, like, let's workshop this. But it's like, bit. yeah, but you actually can be Spider Gwen. Yeah. And if you were, you know, African American or Latino and you didn't relate to Peter, Peter didn't feel like you, you know, Miles might be closer. Was there a previous version of Spider Man that that kind of you carried with you in any certain way while you were creating your characters? From the movies or the comics? Like either? For me, for Peter, it was more because this is Peter at 40. This is Peter Parker past the early years of being a superhero and past the peak of it. And it's kind of what it means to have, you know, lived your dream. 
and then what happens to your life after that. Uh, so my only real reference point was the idea of Peter and those early comics and what, mm -hmm. you know, when I was a kid and I first heard about it and the whole idea is that he's just a regular guy who got bit, but the whole point is that Peter's a regular guy. Right. So this version that they wrote is, a, you'll see, you know, obviously you'll see he's a very regular guy. Uh-huh. He's more regular than we've ever seen. That's right. With that said, nothing but respect to the previous Spider-Man. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> That's I mean, we're not coming in looking to create any trouble with the Spider-Man <laughs> franchise. Yeah. Spider-Man's done pretty good. We're just happy. We're, we're just, just happy we're, we're just to happy. be here happy. with this movie. Happy to be a part yeah. of it. Yeah. But we're starting to get hit with that a lot, where they're uh, like, people are saying it's the best one. What do you think? It's like, well, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll speak for both of us. We're really happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what other character in the Spider Verse of yours you'd like to see get a spin off and why? Spider Noir. That would be a cool spin off. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Spider Gwen, I think she's getting a spin off. Uh, but I'm excited for the. Uh, you know, female Spider-Verse to see what that's all about. I hope Peter and Miles can find their way into that one. Exactly. I would like to see, you know, more of that. That uh, female representation I think would be pretty cool. And not just for the idea of representation and blah, 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 but in terms of the freshness, I think it was really cool in our movie when she pops in. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a lady spider Spider-Man girl. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen it. So no. I'm like, well, what does that whole universe look like? There, this movie proves that there's still room for new interpretations right. and new things to be said. That's right. And that's what's great about it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, speaking of Spider-Noir, I know that you guys sometimes recorded voiceover together. Yeah. Did you ever record voiceover with Nick Cage? No, but I actually asked. And I said I would fly myself to Vegas. And they said, that's just not happening. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to be, even if the recording was like in his house in like a weird basement, I'm like, wherever Nick Cage is doing, whatever Nick Cage is doing, I want two hours of that. I feel like especially if it was in his basement, it's if, like. If he's like, I, I record in this like back shed. Then let's go to the back shed, my sounds man. Sounds awesome. I don't even yeah. care if I'm murdered back I don't there. care. <laughs> I lived pretty good up to the moment. Whatever Nick Cage would offer, I would say yes to. If he's like. I've got this weird appetizer, sure. Whatever it is, I'm eating and pretending it's great. You wouldn't even <laughs> wait for him to eat it first. I don't even care, I'm going for it. If it's poison, kill me, Nick Cage. Let's get weird. I want to experience all of it. But I was, uh, I was told, uh, no, he's doing it on his own. Something that I was thinking about when I was, when I was coming up with questions for this movie is just that whole idea of voiceover is fascinating to me. Yeah. You're having to pretend like you're actually doing things in the moment, yeah. right? So, you mean like the action? Yeah, yeah, like the action is happening. And so I actually kind of wanted to just like test out on the fly, because mm -hmm. I know you guys are good at this. If you could say something like a completely re benign sentence, but do it like you're doing another action. So like if you said like, I like hamburgers, but say it like you just burned your hand on the stove. <laughs> okay? So you'd go like, ah, I like hamburgers. Is that what you mean? The big bucks. <laughs> Is that the yeah, idea? Yeah, that's 100% okay. what this is. Yeah, okay. bravo. Or like if you were like, if you said, I love you, like you were falling off the edge of a building. I love you! <laughs> yeah, okay. Now I get this game. Right, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it took a little bit. Even when I did it, I'm like, they might be doing the nod like I did it wrong and everyone's being polite, but yeah, all right, <laughs> we're doing it right. <laughs> what about, I love these Capri pants. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Contractually, I'm against Capri. Got pants. it. Got yeah, it. So I love these Capri pants. Like you were learning how to fly for the first time. Well, we're talking about Spider Man. Spider Man doesn't fly. Uh, Spider Man I mean, thwips. A, a, what about a first swing? Okay, a first swing. Oh, oh, oh! I love these Capri pants. <laughs> Kind of solid, actually. Okay, so yeah, I don't know where I was going at first. I didn't get out. It actually sounded kind of solid. Yeah. The nice I, thing of the booth, you get a lot of takes, yes. so you're allowed to find it together. Sure, yeah, you got to search for it sometimes. Try. Okay, try. okay. What about your shoelaces are untied when you see a terrifying monster? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning so much. Your shoelaces are untied. 
<laughs> yeah, man, pretty good. That was really good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> I don't need another take on that. Yeah, I think pretty we're good, good on pretty that. Pretty good. <laughs> In a serious thing about that, uh, the fun thing about being able to record together is it, we actually got to act in the scene. So if I had a line and it was somebody from the recording thing who said, your shoelaces are untied, well, they would be doing it like, your shoelaces are untied. And then you've got to do everything around it. What made this one special is I'd never been able to do voiceover with other people. And they would let us do full scenes. So awesome. you get to just act for a scene and then they would record. And then if you missed a line, they would pick that up. Mm -hmm. But I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of the performances feel more like three-dimensional. And it's like, we got to act. He got yeah. to act with Brian. I got to act with Kat. Like, we had different people we got to record with. It does make a difference. It helps a lot. It, especially for everybody sitting in the audience. Yeah, totally. It's cool. When I was watching this, I couldn't help but love and miss Stan Lee. Yeah. And I was wondering if you guys had kind of a recollection or anything about him that you could share with us. Well, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him. Uh, I would have liked to. But what I've really learned about Stanley and doing all this and doing press with, you know, real diehard comic book fans, which I can't consider myself one, even though I like the world, but hearing how much people truly loved him, I've actually learned what Spider-Man's originally about uh, and how it's about anybody, you know, the theme of our movie is obviously anybody can wear the mask, but I didn't realize that was Stan Lee's kind of thing. And that when he created Peter Parker, it was a really weird thing that it was a regular person who became a superhero. And at that time, that was a revolutionary idea. Uh, and so this idea of ordinary people can do great things if they put their mind to it and they work hard, I think is a great message that I didn't realize was his, but I've realized throughout. And I've, you know, I wish I would have met him so I could say, good job, Stanley, <laughs> at life. You did pretty good here. Yeah, I would just say, you know, <clears throat> I uh, appreciate being a part of his uh, ultimate vision, you know, and um, I look at Stanley because I, 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 I think in a way where I think about the hundred years, like my full story, you know, so everything that I do, all the projects I take and everything I put out, <clears throat> even when it comes to like uh, posting things on social media and stuff, it's just like everything needs to be, be for like the bigger purpose, you know? And so I'm writing stories, like I'm, I'm not just talking about not, not playing, uh, or, or uh, I'm not just saying, hey, we don't need to be, you know, 007, we should create our own 007. I'm actually writing that project for myself with my team, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I have these plans for my next 10 years and whatnot. I, I, I do use that journal, <laughs> you know? And um, so seeing it be successful, with Stan Lee and, and knowing that that imagination helped change a lot of my life at this moment, you know what I mean? And these are, this is years later, he just passed and that's very sad, but like he just made, passed it on. he passed it on. And um, I hope that I can follow that, that, uh, that guideline, that outline, you know what I mean? One nice thing about Stan Lee is he has been celebrated for a long time, so it's not one of those guys who you know, all this, a lot of times people die and then everyone talks about how great they are after. Nice thing about somebody living a full life is he knew also what people thought about him, which was a really nice thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's sad and uh, he, his ideas live on.